Australia Newsline is brought to you by the Barbados Tourism Marketing Inc. Cleanup begins in Trinidad after torrential rains trigger a declaration of a national disaster. Our top story in Caribbean Newsline for Monday, October 22nd. From the CMC News Centre in Bridgetown, I'm Don Paris. Good evening. 3,000 households and between 100,000 and 120,000 people have been reported in, by authorities in Trinidad and Tobago as having been directly affected by widespread flooding caused by torrential rains over the past four days. A situation that prompted Prime Minister Dr. Keith Rowley to declare a national disaster. The task of mopping up and assessing the damage began on Monday following the downpours that flooded homes, damaged roads and made bridges in some areas impassable. The Met Service Monday maintained its orange level alert for the Twin Island Republic until Tuesday, warning residents of possible intermittent showers. But at a press conference on Monday, Communications and National Security Minister Stuart Young said while some areas are, some areas are still underwater, the situation is improving. I'm also happy to report that despite the warnings we had from the Met Office in the last 48 hours, we have not had the level of rain activity that was predicted. Thank God for that. It has allowed water to run off with the use of the tides, etc. as well. We are still not, not out of the woods, as they say. We expect this to continue into tomorrow morning, but fortunately at this stage, I'm happy to report that the more, vast majority of the water is running, running off. Areas of Mafeking are still underwater in Mayaro. Resources have been sent there. We are trying to get more and more resources, but at this stage, we go into the cleanup phase. Young said everyone had been reached by rescue teams, although he acknowledged that some people were reluctant to leave their homes. And on that note, Chief Executive Officer of the Office of Disaster Preparedness and Management, Captain Neville Wint, said while rescue teams had gone house to house in search of people in need of assistance, authorities may have to consider legislation that would ensure the compulsory evacuation of people. Meantime, Minister Young defended the government's decision not to declare a national shutdown on Monday. As you all have seen, the state of the roadways, etc., have improved. I was very careful yesterday to say that those who are affected by the flooding, obviously, they need to stay and get their houses in order. Those who are going to help them as well. But I'd just like to put this proposition forward to the national community. If the government had declared a close down, a shutdown, would the groceries be open? Would the hardwares be open? Would the pharmacies be open? How would people be getting supplies? The responders that you're now counting on to come and assist you in the cleanup drives, those workers are essential. The public servant workers who are coming now into these areas to help with the cleanup. If we had declared no work, where would they be this morning? Meantime, regional leaders have been offering assistance to Trinidad and Tobago. Prime Minister Rowley has been contacted by the Prime Ministers of Jamaica, Barbados, Dominica and Grenada, as well as Venezuelan President Nicolas Maduro. The leaders have all indicated they are on standby to assist in the event that requests are forthcoming. 
Rowley has thanked all the leaders for their concern, but he's indicated so far that difficult as it is, the authorities were coping for the moment through government agency responses and private outpourings from persons across the nation. He plans to seek Cabinet's approval for $25 million TT for the relief effort. Uh, the Ministry of Finance has also requested the Caribbean Catastrophe Risk Insurance Facility to urgently disperse funds under the country's excessive rainfall policy. Staying in Trinidad and Tobago, the University of the West Indies St. Augustine campus says it's standing with two students who were arrested during a protest last week. Thousands of students staged a demonstration on the campus last Thursday calling for improved security on the heels of the alleged attempted rape of a female student. But at a press conference, Principal Professor Brian Copeland sought to assure students and the public that the university has taken steps to improve security on the campus. Nathaniel John and Brian Richards were arrested during the protest and were last Friday taken before the court on charges of assault and disorderly conduct as well as resisting arrest. They were represented by Prakash Ramadar, who is also the Member of Parliament for St. Augustine. But the university principal says the UWI is ready to help there. The university is prepared to provide legal counsel to represent the students' interests. While the university's executive and student guild appeared to be at direct odds on Thursday, it appears the differences between both parties have moved a bit closer to being resolved. When asked about his thoughts on Thursday's protest action by students, Mr. Copeland said, it's always good to see students stand up for what they believe in. First time I saw it on this campus in a long time, I was really and truly moved because then I actually went home and, and told my family, okay, we don't have to worry about, about the, the, the future generations. However, he wished the situation didn't have to reach to this point based on an attack on a female student and questions about campus security. The university will get things right, Professor Copeland insisted. Assistant Head of Security Gregory Coraspe said they will be taking immediate measures to improve campus security. What we have planned is an increased foot joint patrol during the day with the campus police and the TTPS. And they will be patrolling specific areas, areas identified by the students as areas where they feel uncomfortable. When asked about the police response to the protest, Mr. Copeland said he would prefer to not make an official comment on that until a full investigation into the incident was completed. That report from Joshua C. Mungle of TV6 News. Over in Jamaica, police are investigating the murder of yet another teenage girl. Authorities say the mutilated body of 14-year-old Raven Wilson was found in a plastic bag meters away from her home on Sunday, three days after she was reported missing, and less than a month after another 14-year-old who was raped and murdered was laid to rest. The discovery has prompted a human rights and advocacy group to call for more protection for children. We get more in this TVJ News report. Another grief-stricken mother weeps, brought to tears at the death of her teenage daughter, 14-year-old Raven Wilson, a student of the Ultravious High School in St. Anne. Her battered body found approximately 6 o'clock Sunday morning on Top Road in St. Anne's Bay. Her parents say on Friday, Raven did not come home from school at the usual time, and so they took action. I go to the station and report it. Say Raven is missing. The police take a statement from me and tell me that he was calling me back and I never see anything done. And again, more action, printing flyers with her picture and asking around for assistance. But when they returned to the station on Saturday, the police made a broadcast that she was missing and assisted with phone calls to persons who they believe may have information on her whereabouts. But on Sunday, her father, Loxley Wilson, got a call that a body was found in a bag in the Top Road community. He rushed to the location where their greatest fear was confirmed. Mr. Wilson says from what he saw, he believes her attacker tried to rape her. I see her uniform rape. And she's still up on her ties and so. And so. Mm -hmm. She was maybe, it was a attempt of rape. Mm -hmm. 
but it couldn't happen. She was her name is it, so she gets licked to the face. The police say they are following strong leads in identifying those responsible. Investigators say they will be awaiting the results of a post-mortem to determine the cause of death. Coming up in Caribbean Newsline, Liat shareholders meet to discuss the airline's future. Dominica's World Creole Music Festival in 2018, October 26, 27, 28 at the Windsor Park Stadium in the capital city, Roseau. Three nights over eight genres, 40 years of independence, one location, Do Dominica, the 20th edition of Dominica's World Creole Music Festival. For more information, like our Facebook page, Dominica Festivals. Visit our website, www.dominicafestivals.com for all travel, accommodation, and ticketing details. My love, my home, my Dominica. Building a resilient nation. See you there. Proudly sponsored by the government of Dominica and Discover Dominica Authority. Been calling you. Welcome back. Shareholder governments of regional airline Liat met in St. Vincent on Monday to discuss the future of the airline. A government statement said the shareholders were set to discuss a number of options to secure the future viability of the Antigua-based regional carrier. The talks were held ahead of the meeting of Organization of Eastern Caribbean States leaders on Tuesday, and Grenada's Prime Minister, Dr. Keith Mitchell, said the LIAT talks could be a defining moment for the future of the airline as discussions are held on the varying roles of shareholder governments, stakeholders, and the private sector. He said the underlying premise of the discussions was that the traveling public must be better served and inter-regional travel encouraged. In Guyana, Prime Minister Moses Nagamutu says the country will seek to reposition the public sector as it develops its new oil and gas industry. Addressing the opening of the 2018 Biennial Conference of the Commonwealth Association for Public Administration and Management, he said the country was also seeking close collaboration and partnerships in dealing with climate change and other issues. We get the details in this Newsroom Guyana report. At the Ghana Marriott Hotel in Georgetown, the Commonwealth Association for Public Administration and Management opened its seventh biannual conference. Here, Prime Minister Moses Nagamutu said the oil and gas bring new responsibilities for the public sector and the government was keen to collaborate with its Commonwealth partners to make this happen. He said that while with oil and gas, the government's focus would be to develop strategies to secure a better life for people, the public sector has to be prepared to grapple with environmental and climate governance challenges, as well as green state development strategy. The public sector is a critical stakeholder in and guardian of the national patrimony. The national patrimony cannot be divorced from climate considerations any more than it can be separated from matters of economics relating to improving the lives of our citizens. The Prime Minister said the integrated mandate of the public service, ministries, agencies and departments is to ensure improved human and social well-being and that the Green State Development Strategy offers a customized 20-year plan for achieving sustainable development goals which the public sector would have to be geared to handle. The GSDS as a progressive policy document is underpinned with a focus on the following. Sound fiscal and monetary policy, green jobs and inclusive economic diversification, 
sustainable management of natural resources, transition to renewable energy, resilient infrastructure, green towns and urban public spaces, a healthy, educated, and socially cohesive population, good governance and strong institutions, and trade, investment, and international cooperation. Mr. Nagamoto said the Green State Development Strategy will expand the mandate of the public sector, which will be characterized by independency of strategic actions. He said it will require available capacity, skills, and technology to bring about strategic changes to current practices and to bring about a new mindset for the new Green State agenda. Well, it's time for Newsline Health, and in light of prolonged rainfall and severe flooding just experienced in parts of Trinidad and Tobago, the Caribbean Public Health Agency is urging residents to pay special attention to their health, personal hygiene, vector control, and food and water safety. Whenever there's flooding, the immediate concern is often about damage to homes, roads, and other infrastructure but there are potential health consequences as well. As the Caribbean Public Health Agency CARFA points out, on the heels of the downpours that left some sections of Trinidad and Tobago underwater, floods can potentially increase the transmission of communicable diseases. There are waterborne diseases such as cholera and leptospirosis and vector-borne diseases like dengue and malaria. But particularly in this hurricane season, when weather systems dump heavy rains on the islands, we can't avoid the flooding. But Carfa says when it happens, you can protect yourself from getting sick. It's always best to avoid flooded areas. Stay out of the water as much as possible as it can greatly reduce your chances of contracting diseases such as skin infections, leptospirosis, diarrhea and other waterborne diseases. Keep children out of the water as they are most at risk of contracting diseases. Avoid swimming in flooded canals and trenches as these may be contaminated and can make you sick. But if you must go into accumulated surface or flood waters, use protective gear such as long boots, gloves and eye protection. Prepare a foot bath of half cup of bleach to one bucket of water and wash your feet before entering the house. Apply Vaseline or oil to your skin as it forms a barrier and provides some protection from the dirty water. Standing water caused by heavy rainfall or overflow of rivers can also act as breeding sites for mosquitoes and therefore increase the potential for mosquito-borne diseases. You can protect yourselves and your family against mosquitoes by sleeping under mosquito nets and using mosquito repellents and ensuring that all water stored around your home in containers is covered to reduce the breeding of mosquitoes. Remember, the mosquito that spreads the Zika, Dengue, and Chikungunya virus breathes in fresh, still water, especially rainwater, around your home. Health risks from flooding can also be greatly reduced by using safe water for drinking, cooking, and brushing your teeth, keeping food supplies from contact with flood water, discarding all foods that have been in contact with flood waters, washing all fruits and vegetables with treated safe water and peeling them before eating, cooking food thoroughly and consuming cooked meals within two hours of preparation, storing all remaining food safely in a refrigerator and reheating thoroughly before consuming, and keeping all food items and drinking water in covered containers. Of course, practicing good personal hygiene also makes a difference, so wash hands thoroughly before eating meals, after going to the toilet, cleaning children, or handling animals and contaminated materials. And if you experience fever, coughing, vomiting, diarrhea, skin rash, cuts, bruises, or other illnesses, seek medical attention immediately. Ahead in Newsline Sport, West Indies lose the first ODI in the five-match series against India. This hurricane tip comes to you compliments the Caribbean Disaster Emergency Management Agency and the Caribbean Media Corporation. Be prepared. Make an emergency communications plan for your family. What to do, where to go, how to reconnect. Yeah, luggage is over with. Yeah, luggage is over with. How much I must pay? 
No, you can't do it like that. You'll have to take some of the things out of the suitcases and put in a box or something. You know, you're a wicked woman. A wicked fat woman. Do you want a box, sir? Box, me no. <laughs> you think that you're helping me strike me? Try a box. <laughs> Barbados, it's time to laugh again. Get yourselves ready for the Caribbean's funniest men and women. Fast Promotions Annual Caribbean Comedy Explosion. Saturday, October 27th, Sir Garfield Soba's Gymnasium, 8 p.m. Get your early bird tickets now and pay $60 before all are sold out at ticketlinks.com. All ticket links outlets nationwide. Jeans Inc. Sheraton. CS Pharmacy, Rubus Wildy, and Eddie Supermarket Spice Town. I come in here as a loner. I know you spot me from far. Barbados, renowned for its pristine beachfront and fantastic weather, continues to leave quite an impression on newcomers to the island and returning visitors. The Caribbean Island. Quite popular as a vacation hotspot is not only beautiful due to its natural aesthetics. The island of Barbados continues to grow in popularity because of unique connections developed with our people, our culture. We can't wait to welcome you. Welcome back. We continue with sports. Left-hander Shimon Hetmeyer struck a dashing hundred, but Rohit Sharma and captain Virat Kohli answered with high-quality centuries of their own as India hardly broke a sweat in chasing down a competitive 300-plus total to easily win, win the opening one-day international on a Sunday. Sent in at the Barca Paris Cricket Stadium, West Indies marched to an impressive 322 for eight of their 50 overs. It was only the fourth time the West Indies had surpassed the 300-run mark since the 2015 World Cup. Hetmeyer shone brightest with 106, while opener Kiran Powell chipped in with a fluent 51 and holder 38. That's a good shout. Give it! Useful boundary. But he hits it well. He hits it magnificently, Shimon Hetmeyer for six. Oh no, oh no, too easy. This one deposited. Front foot goes towards mid-wicket, the ball goes over mid-wicket. Brings up the half century. He's batted and played some wonderful shots. Well, that's full enough. The Rothman Powell will have to go home. Oh, that's a half track up and deserve what it got. Well, he's gone for it. The big one to get 100. What a way to get to his third one day international 100. Taken. He's gone for 106. It's 248 for 6. Oh, where is it heading? He thinks it's hitting the stumps. Smash that. Oh, yes. Yeah, trying to be cheeky, trying to be cute. Losing their skipper. He's gone for it. A surprise 6. This one was a forehand cross court slapped away and cut away as well by Ambati Raidu two runs of the final delivery 15 runs of the 50th over India got over the line with nearly eight overs remaining with Rohit slamming a robust unbeaten 152 while captain Kohli stroked a breathtaking 140 to snatch the game away from the Windies. Get it. Get it. Oh, just missed it. Virat Kohli goes to his 49th half century. Love that and this one was a rank bad delivery. And what he's done. He's tried to play the ball straight in the V's. Another fine boundary from him. 
It's a big one. Another. Brings up the 50 for Rohit Sharma. What an innings. No ball again, and this has been crashed through covers. Drives. And drives well. Another 100, the 36th in his ODI career. Oh, what a hit. Oh, that was one thing missing. A six. Off cutter. Another boundary. This is beginning to look like a beat down. Big shots now. There it is. Into the crowd again. And that's a century for Rohit Sharma. And he's gone. 140, 256 for two. Well, that's another six for Rohit Sharma. Another big one. Little man with a big hit. Craftily done. Big hit. And it'll stay that way. 150 up for Rohit Sharma. And India have coasted to a victory by eight wickets. The heavy and persistent rainfall which caused severe flooding across Trinidad and Tobago led to the abandonment of two Group A matches in the Regional Super 50 on Sunday. The matches between Trinidad and Tobago Red Force and Canada at Queen's Park Oval in the TNT capital Port of Spain and West Indies B and the Guyana Jaguars at the Brian Lara Cricket State Academy in the southern community of Taruba were cancelled. The result meant that the Jaguars and Red Force finished in the top two positions respectively in Group A and will advance to the semi-finals of the tournament to be contested this coming Thursday and Friday at Kensington Oval in Barbados. In Group B, the combined campuses and colleges Marooners currently occupy the top spot in Group B with 22 points, while the Jamaica Scorpions sit in the second position on 21 points. Both teams play their last group match on Monday to determine the final places and complete the semi-final lineup. The grand finale of the Super 50 Cup is next Sunday at Kensington Oval. And that's the sport. We'll be right back. Caribbean Newsline is brought to you by the Barbados Tourism Marketing Inc. Their history have won the women's ICC World T20 title. 
Again, the major developments of this day, cleanup and damage assessment underway in Trinidad after torrential rains trigger widespread flooding and a declaration of a national disaster. And in sport, West Indies lose the first ODI in the five-match series against India. And that's Caribbean Newsline. For news and sport around the clock, log on to condonews.com. And for more of our programming, log on to caribvision.tv and subscribe to Caribvision's YouTube channel. We'll be back here again tomorrow, but from all of us at CMC News, thank you for watching and good night. Thank you.